Okay, welcome to a digital literacy workshop for today. It looks like we have a small group of that. Okay, um, this this should be just a fun a fun time looking at something cool things you can do with Google Search. Um, there's some more serious things you can do with Google Search too, and we will have an advanced search day on another day. We'll kind of look at that today too. So um, that's what we're doing today: time saving and amazing ways to use Google Search, and um, you'll notice that, uh, well, I emailed out notes to everybody, and so they've got my, you should have my notes from today um, with some of the things we're going to be going through. In addition, you've got the uh, reflection form and uh, presentation slides, which we'll be going through, and then the archive link is uh, where we'll be sharing the, the webinar once it's archived today. So I'm going to move that out of the way, and we're going to get moving. Okay, so again, I showed you the collaborative notes. Um, for those of you who may not know, with GoToMeeting, I have everyone muted because it's, the sound is really weird if I don't. But if you, have to, if you have a question or you need to say something, if you type it in the chat box, um, I will eventually see it and try to answer your question. And um, so, and just a reminder also to fill in the reflection form if you're getting clock hours or if you'd just like to let me know what you need, still need help with. Okay, so our learning targets for this session, we're going to look at tips, tri tricks, and shortcuts for using Google Search more efficiently. So there's a lot of things you can do right in the, the um, search bar with Google, and so we're going to take a look at that today. So Google's whole thing is about search. So we've been looking at all of the other cool tools that they have uh, with Google Apps for Education. But really, they're, the way they make money, the reason that they exist, the reason that they're getting richer and richer every day is because of their search engine. And so Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And that's what they're all about. And there's lots of cool things that are happening um, and we're just going to kind of scratch the surface today with some of the cool things you can do with Google Search. Okay, so this is just a fun one that you probably or you might already know, but um, a really important search shortcut is Control F. And this isn't really a Google thing, it can work with anything, but uh, again, if I just pull these notes over here, actually I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up something else. I'm going to pull up oh, Abraham Lincoln over here. So I have this article about Abraham Lincoln. And if I do Control F, I get this little search bar over here. I'm gonna, I've already typed in war. So I want to see how many times the word war is mentioned in this article. So if I hit that. I will see that in this article, in this Wikipedia article about Abraham Lincoln, war is mentioned 169 times, and I can scroll through each of those times and look to see, um, and look to see uh, what is it's a mention of. Now that's not a really useful thing unless you're just kind of looking for, um, you know. Um, something like that, like the frequency of, of a word used. But where it's really useful is when you're looking for a specific um, comment or something like that in a text or on a web page and you don't know exactly where to look. If you do the control F and you type in that phrase or you type in that word, it'll take you to the place in that on that website where that is mentioned and it highlights it for you. So that's a good thing to know. Move O Abraham Lincoln out of the way here. All right. So another cool thing about um, Google is it's got this autocomplete. Um, so as you start typing, it's gonna it knows a lot about who you are and what you search for, where you are, that kind of thing. So it starts to complete based on all of that information what it thinks you might be searching for. So for instance, if I start typing in um, I5, automatically it comes up with I5's Gadget Bridge. 
because here I am in Mount Vernon, that's a big story, that kind of thing. Now, that might not be what I'm looking for, but that, that's, that's what Google is thinking I might be looking for, and it starts giving me suggestions. So that's a cool thing to know. Sometimes it can get a little frustrating. But another really cool tool, there's a whole bunch of tools that are right in the search bar. And one of them is a timer. So if I type in timer for two seconds and click here, uh-oh. So you'll see that, you'll see, and I'm going to do it for a little bit longer because that was so fast we didn't even see it. Um, timer for four seconds and hit search. A timer comes up and it starts counting down. And when it gets to the end, it's, so that's a really helpful tool for a teacher to have. As they're working, they can, um, you know, pull that up. And there's all kinds of timers online anyway, but this one is right there in your Google search. So it's really convenient. All right, moving on. Another thing that you can do is you can use it as a calculator. So right in, I'm just using the Google search. I'm not asking for a calculator. I just type in. Um, and up pops a calculator and the answer to my question. So I didn't have to write uh, calculator or anything like that. I just typed in the problem. It recognized it as an algorithm and it comes up with an answer. Okay. And here's a more difficult one. You can see what, what it does. It actually has a graphing calculator. And it'll actually graph for you. All you have to do is search for it. Moving on, I think all this stuff is very cool. Okay, maybe you need to convert something. So you're converting uh, kilograms to pounds. And it just pops up with this little conversion tool. And then once you have this conversion tool in there, you can use it to convert all kinds of things. So I can convert temperatures. So from Celsius to Fahrenheit or length, or mass, speed, volume, area, fuel consumption, time, and even digital storage. So I can figure out how many bits in a byte or how many how many gigabytes in a how many kilobytes in a gigabyte and all that kind of good stuff. If you want to get really nerdy on it. Okay, any questions so far? I'm just kind of flying through here. Okay, continuing on. All right, so another thing that you can do is you can translate right in the search bar. So I can say translate kangaroo. I don't know why I'm doing kangaroo, but I just decided to. Um, to French. I don't know how to say kangaroo in French. I didn't even need to say that. So I can say translate to French. I did that wrong. I just need to say translate kangaroo French. And there is how I would do kangaroo in French. Or maybe I would like Swahili. Because everybody needs to know how to say kangaroo in Swahili. Come on, Google. Oh, I guess it doesn't have a Swahili translation for kangaroo. I, I broke Google. Okay, we'll translate thank you and just stop reading that we can do that. Hmm. There we go, a sante. And if it's thank you very much, it's a sante sana. All right, moving on. All right, another thing that you can do is you can um, check the weather right in the Google search bar. So if I want to see what the weather in Mount Vernon is, it just pops right up. If I just look at this, if I just type in weather, it knows where I am, so it pops up local temperature. But what if I want to know what the weather is in Nacogdoches, Texas? Okay, that's where I was yesterday, <laughs> and that's the weather there. So I can see precipitation and wind. Or maybe I want to know, and this is a sad thing, 
But um, when the sun rises, I don't care about Muffin Edges in Mount Vernon. So if I just do sunrise, now it thinks I'm in Nacogdoches. Sunrise in Mount Vernon, 7.02. And sadly, sunset in Mount Vernon, 4.44 p.m. All right. Or maybe we want to know uh, what time it is in another time zone. So time in Jakarta, and that pops exactly what time it is in Jakarta. This would be helpful if you're trying to collaborate with somebody in another part of the, the world. So right there, all of this stuff is just happening right in the Google search bar. I didn't have to pull up any special tool. If I go to um, movies, and I put in Burlington since we don't have a theater in Mount Vernon, and it pulls up the movies, and you can even click on a trailer if you want, um, and it shows you where the where you can get movies, and the map, and all that kind of stuff right there in Google Maps, I mean in the Google search. Any questions so far? Okay, keep on going. All right, so there's some other cool things that you can do. For instance, if I wanted to, I'm going to go back to my search on the I-5 bridge collapse. Okay, so I get the regular searches, but I can go to the search tools feature right here. And if I click on, on the search tools, sorry, I can click when, what, what uh, links do I want. So I want things that have been posted in the last week. So this gives me the most current, well, I can say within the last hour too, but this gives me current information. I can also, um, I can also sort by a specific date. Maybe I'm looking for something for, from um, a specific date. And I can also search by um, places um, by reading level. So I can pick things that are basic or advanced. So um, there's some cool things I can do with that. So that's under search tools and you can just define your search a little more. So if I want to find um, things where the Skagit Bridge has been mentioned in the last hour, nobody has mentioned it. So let's try the last 24 hours, and you'll see these articles about um, the Skagit Bridge there. And if I want to make sure that it's talking about the I-5 Skagit Bridge and not just any bridge, click there, and then I'm going to say in the past week, nothing's been mentioned, how about the past month? Now I'm getting a little I've got too many things going here, all of those. There we go. All right, so moving on with that. Now there's some um, useful search operators still looking for. So if you wanted to search specifically within a site, so if I wanted to search um, for mention of, um, let's say, Seattle Seahawks, I can spell it right. And I just want to look at um, site, I want to look at ESPN. Oh, I missed that somehow. Seattle Seahawks, I think I'm, oh, I'm, I've got too much going on here. I'm going to start over. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to site, ESPN, Seattle Seahawks. No! Why is that not working? I'm going to turn it around. Maybe e oh, I know why it is not working. Okay, and then I'm going to go sites. Site. ESPN.com. Okay, sorry about that. So now you'll see that the 
everything that comes up, I'm just searching one site. So I'm not searching the whole web. I'm just searching ESPN.com. Or I could do the same thing and search CNN.com. And I would just pull up the, the stuff from CNN. So that's one. Um, if you want a, a specific thing, you want to limit your results to the exact spelling or a complete phrase, then what you would do is you put it in quotes. If you want to exclude something, so like for instance, um, if I type in Jaguar, you'll see I get cars and things like that, but I don't want cars. I just want um, the animal. So if I put minus car, it takes away all the mention of cars and just shows me the animal. Okay? Or if you want to search for a specific year. So um, if I just want information on common core standards, and I haven't searched this before, so who knows what's going to happen. And I want it in 2012, and I would go dot dot 2013. So I could search for information on the Common Core that's within that range period. Okay, the other thing I can do, one kind of fast because nobody's asking me questions, is I can hit, uh, I can search for related things. So if you want something that's similar to, so I can say like related, related to Edmodo. So this will give me Edmodo stuff, but it will also give me other products that are similar to Edmodo, like Nomia and Ask3. And this one says Web Tools and Tech. So there's different different things here that are um, give you examples of now the time for that is. I have a timer going off somewhere. <laughs> okay. I set a timer to remind me not to go too far. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. This is really cool voice search. So if I click on um, this voice search here, and I've got my microphone set up. Great Dane. According to Wikipedia, the Great Dane, also denoted as Grand Danois, is a German breed of domestic dog known for its giant... Okay, so all I had to do is click on the little microphone and speak into it, and then it speaks the results to me. All right. Um... You can search for images. So if I wanted to search for images, I click here to search for images. There's a bunch of great things. But I'm going to search for um, rose. So here's a bunch of roses. But then from that, I can click on the search tools. And I can search by color. So all I want to see is blue roses. OK? And I can also click on type of, of image. So if I just want clip art, then I'll just get clip art there. Or if I want um, line drawings, I want animated things. So that's kind of a cool feature. So I go back here, all the blue, I can change it to green roses. Wow, there's a lot of green roses too. So you can search for images. That's a cool feature. You can also search for um, images by dragging an image into the um, search bar. I have an image over here that I found, if I can get to it. So um, I drag this image, and I just drop it here. So this is a picture off my computer. And so I drag the image in. And then it comes up, it, it recognizes the image as the Calgary Olympic Park. And then it has information about Calgary Olympic Park. So I can search by image. I'll have to say this doesn't always work that well. I haven't had a whole lot of success. Um, but sometimes it does, and it's kind of fun to, to try out. So searching by image. Not seeing any questions. So I'm going to keep going. Um, we talked a little bit about advanced search. If I uh, am looking in here, if I click on this little gear, I know you can't see that very well, 
it gives me advanced search options and I can narrow my search results um, in lots of different ways by languages. Um, if I just want PowerPoints, I can search just for PowerPoints or if I just want PDFs or um, Excel documents, I can search for all of those things. I can search by reading level. Um, so that there's some different things you can do with advanced search. Like I said, we can do more of that later, uh, but that's a whole session, so I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time with that. You can also um, translate. So we already looked at the translating right from the um, right from the, um, the the search bar, but you can also go to um, translate.google.com. And it brings up a, a translate tool for you. And you can do a currency converter in the same way. You just type in um, Google currency converter. And then you can look at the different currencies. This is the graphing calculator. And we already did, we already looked at a graphing calculator a minute ago. But this is a fun search that you can do with the graphing calculator. And it graphs a heart for you. And that's in your notes. Okay. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to just say Google Books, they are, they are, um, if I go here, I'll show you real quick. They have all of these books um, that they're scanning into Google. So I'm going to do Washington State here. And then just pick up a... Here's a book, Washington in the Pacific Northwest. And they've actually scanned this book, and it looks like a textbook, which may be useful for our fourth grade teachers who have a hard time finding materials on Washington State. And you can actually create a library of what you find that you would like to, um, to share with others or just to be able to get back to easily. So that's Google Books or books.google.com, Google News, in Google News it will um, show you the current news, if I go here, top stories, current news that's happening here, I can pick another country and I can see the current news from the different countries, so this is a really cool one to kind of compare how, how different people see what's happening in the world is oftentimes you'll find the same story in several different places and, and what's the top story and that kind of thing. Almost done here. This is a very cool um, thing that people have set up called a Google a day. And when I click on a Google a day, they've made these searches. So if I click on this one here, maybe it'll pop up. Here we go. So I've made these searches um, like this one. If you came home from a trip and you had 150 South African Rand, 350 Kuwaiti dinars, and 200 Japanese yen, how many U.S. dollars would you have? And you'd have to use the search tools to get there. I'm running out of time. And then these are some fun things, and I'm going to let you try these on your own. These are in the notes. But type the following things into the Google search bar and see what happens. And that is the end of that. I want to remind you to reflect on your learning, please, by um, uh, doing the, um, the reflection form in the, uh, that you have a link to in your email. And next week is Veterans Day. So we won't have one next week, but the next week after that, we're going to look at some features in Discovery Stream that you might not know about. So that's it. Does anybody have any questions before we call it a night? Okay. I see a question from Kim. And um, why don't you just call me in just, just a few seconds, Kim, and we can answer that. All right? And I will talk to you later. Thanks for coming. I'm going to hit stop recording.